this will probably be a very short piece of random footage um, and very out of sync with everything else but that's the bonnet it's repainted obviously it's completely rust free so I'm trying to keep it that way by filling it with dinitrol dinitrol with the compressor um, I also had some built hammer Dynax S50 which is the really dark coloured creeping stuff so I shot a whole load of that in first and now I'm just going over the top with this stuff you could, I've already done it so I know it's filled in there because I was watching it come out of those holes earlier it was on this I've done that along the lower edge um, and the top corners and the sides I haven't really done the top edge because every time I open the bonnet or shut the bonnet it'll probably leak everywhere and that bit doesn't really collect water or rot so yeah just a little bit more rust prevention it's little things but they do boost your mojo so I've just bolted the bonnet on it fits perfectly so Dave at NPR well I presume it was Dave it might have been Kieran or Mike I'm not sure but they gapped it really nicely and where I bought that lip of the wing up I don't know whether you remember but it had obviously been um, damaged before it was fitted and it got painted slightly sucker down so I've bought that up without chipping the paint and it's looking really rather nice I've also just remembered why it was I stopped working on this for a while and it was because I was under there drilling through the universal joint for the gearbox linkage and I spun it round and smashed my thumb which meant I couldn't work and I just kind of got sidetracked but I'm going to um, I mean really the reason I'm working on it today is because I needed to move that bonnet somewhere safe and it was safest to just put it on the car but I'm going to have a damn good clean out underneath um, I also need this thing rolling because I need it out of the garage so that I can bring an engine on a trolley down here and then put it in the end of the garage because I've got a new engine for that one so that's a top secret project um, but I'm super excited about the engine that's going in it that's already got a 3.9 V8 in it um, so I'll reveal more about that at another time but for the minute I'm just going to keep tidying tinkering and taking stock this very much is project get it roll uh, because I do need to roll it forward I've got well bonnet on so you just showed you that there's quite a lot under here that I never reconnected for some reason I don't really know why I basically presume I just never got around to it but things like track rods or tie rods or tie bars whatever you want to call them that need to go in uh, lower wishbone steering rack lower wishbone to the subframe but what I'm concentrating on now is what injured me last time which is doing up the gear linkage I was trying to improve it this is a weak spot on all of these PG1 gearboxes basically that UJ uh, screws up it wears out the bushes that are in here so you can see that tiny movement that's not bad for one of these so for the moment just to get it rolling I'm gonna um, do it up as it is I basically had two of these selectors and I picked all the like tightest components out of the two lock put all together but really I need to take that apart and put the solid bushes in um, and what I was doing when I injured myself was drilling that out so I could put a bigger bolt through and then that links the linkage to the actual gearbox so I can now do that it's still horrible you see the amount of movement you get before the gearbox actually does anything so I will have to address that but just not right now another aspect of problems arising from uh, picking up on projects where you kind of left them half done is nuts and bolts and hardware so I thought I had everything and I probably do but I can't find it so I'm missing the fine pitched nuts for the ends of the lower control arms and the track rod ends and the rover bolts that go from the tie rod into the lower arms which is really annoying because I, I know I've got them um, I don't want to buy the same stuff again because I'll have to buy it all from Remo Brothers and that'll be expensive but at the same time I just goddamn need it so I can get this on its wheels and move it so I might have to bite the bullet which is super annoying I do however have my lovely new high quality stainless steel water pipes 
The only thing is, the old ones I took off and put on that red 420 GSI turbo, um, the little pipe that ran from the thermostat around and up to the header tank. Uh, what have I done with it? This one. On the other set, it had little legs that came down and bolted onto the coolant rail across here, so it was really neat and tidy. This set doesn't have that, so this might be a bit wobbly, which is a shame, but we'll make do. But yeah, that will go back in there, like so, into that stud. I can fit my um, water pipe from there to there, hopefully. And then, I've also remembered, I was making a heat shield, which will bolt onto these and then protect um, the radiator and the cooling fans and everything from the hot manifold. This is version one of the heat shield. So I've chopped a little tab out of there which will go onto the outlet of the turbocharger for the pressurized there. And there's one down here which will pick up on one of the downpipe elbow to, um, what's it called? Compressor or turbine housing of the turbo and I've got a copper nut to go on there and there's just enough thread to get it on there so I'm going to trial fit that and then I'll mark up and cut the top straight and find some nice washers to go on here and make it look a little bit tidier well it's in it's not exactly artwork but at least it'll prevent too much heat going into the back of the radiator fans and up onto the intercooler piping so We'll just have to wait and see how it gets on. What I didn't want was it to fanny around and vibrate or rattle because that sort of noise can drive you insane. So it should hold its shape. It's held in in four places. Um, so it should be all right. You won't see a lot of it by the time the intercooler piping is in. Um, so yeah, we'll just wait and see what it looks like when it's all back together. It's a while later, I would say a few days, but I can't actually remember how long ago it was. And I say a few days, quite a lot. Anyway, I've now got some bits and pieces, nuts and things that I was missing. So that is a, a lower control arm to hub nut. I've also bought some of the new genuine Rover tie bar to lower arm bolts as well. So I'm just gonna put that together, shove it on the ground pump the tyres up, find some front wheels and tyres and uh, just move it I guess. Most of this is going together okay, having to raise bits and pieces on the trolley jack to um, get splines and that engaged and I've got my torque wrench out because in that book I've got all my torque wrench settings so it's quite therapeutic really. Going full of it. Um, I'm going to take the calipers back off and send them off to be refurbished. I think these are the 620 Ti calipers, big ones. Uh, and I'll also um, send the rears off too. Well, that's moderately exciting. Just shoved some more wheels on the front. I actually have a car that sits on the ground for the first time in a very long time. Um, next logical thing is to reconnect all of the coolant pipes, put the rad and the intercooler back in and, you know, do that sort of aspect of it. Can you tell I'm quite tired? My thought processes have slowed right down. Getting this wonderful feeling of deja vu. Trying to remind myself where all of these various pipes go. That one goes down here, I'm sure either that way round or that way round can't remember we'll work it out uh, basically this should all be fine to go back together the intercooler pipes I made myself a beading tool because at boost if you just have normal clamps these will just pop off uh, I did a video on that I did a video on making the tool I did a video on using the tool and doing all the pipe work and then I lost all the video so I'll grab the tool just to show you what it looks like sorry I won't be showing you the tool because I can't find it but basically it's a pair of mold grips with uh, a piece of bar welded across one of the jaws 
and the reciprocal jaw I've ground a channel in it so when you close them up it bites down and creates a bead like so it's not like a proper job like a bead roller but it's good enough to just stop things popping apart if I do find it I will try and insert a piece of video because it's quite cool tool found them that's what they are so old mole grips piece of um, ring welded across the lower jaw and then a channel cut in the upper one so when you clamp them up it just crushes that and um, the aluminium soft enough that it leaves a little bead in it so you just work your way chomping your way around and then you end up with bead coolant pipes mostly installed just trying to remind myself where all of these bits and pieces went it's such a long time ago since I worked on this car but we will get there slight fail when I did all of this mocking up to mount the panel to the well the slam panel to this bracket to the rad bracket to the uh, intercooler I never put the bonnet latch in this now clashes with everything so I'm not sure what to do it might be that I do away with this altogether I don't want bonnet pins but I might think of something else to do or I have to rejig all of this or section this I don't know very annoying though I think I might have lucked out big time and I won't know until the intercooler pipes in and the front bumper is on or at least I go and get it on for it up I think that the bracket that I could or was going to use on there to go between the intercooler and this bracket where I had pre-drilled a little hole and put a captive thread in I could just go through that instead with a little 90 degree bracket so we should be okay intercooler back out again because I've got to put the fans in I have uh, now managed to squeeze with a rejig of the hoses two big fans in the back which was always the problem trying to get enough clearance for fans uh, the original 220 turbos had the fans ahead of the rad pushing through and the intercooler up here I've put the intercooler in front of the radiator running the pipes through there which means the fans can only go on the back which means it's a bit of a squeeze but they are in I now just need to find my uh, zip fitting kit Chill these bits and secure them given up for the moment I'm knackered and I've got a long day tomorrow so I've just thrown the bumper on to see what it kind of looks like bit of a mess but it's going to be one of those really fiddly jobs to align all the front of that and make it look nice uh, and to make sure that that slam panel is stiff enough so that when you slam the bonnet it doesn't I don't know bend something so a bit of head scratching to do and I'm not going to do it now because I'm not in the mood so it can wait till next time